have black created a trend out of subjugation? And the question that goes with that is, have black men been taught to normalize savagery? They're basically one in the same question, just articulated differently. Okay. You want me to repeat it or you got it? I, I, I think I, I I think I got it. Um <clears throat> the black men savage. So so honestly, um I'm just gonna go based off of some things I might have said before. So working in the school system and, and seeing how some young men, you know, as a guy, you're taught to be strong, that you shouldn't, not that you shouldn't have emotions or you, you, that you have to be strong at all times, right? That you can't, you can't cry or you're weak or, or you can't show this or you're weak. And I think it only stems frustration, um, especially in people who have a lot that they're going through and don't necessarily know how to deal with it. Never has never been taught to deal with it like how to deal with it, but just taught that it is what it is and you can't do nothing about it and you can't cry, you can't let things out. And, and through crying, we release so much. We release so much. And I think, I think it does teach, I think black men have been taught savagery. Um, just from, just, you know, and, and sometimes it, our intentions are to make them strong for everything that they have to endure on a day-to-day -day basis, just being black in America, but the way we go about it is sometimes wrong. And we really need to teach um, black men how to, how to cope with their emotions, things, different things that they can do versus just telling them, hey, you can't cry, you can't complain about it. You just gotta live and you have to be a provider and you have to have this and you have to do this. and. We, I feel like we need to learn, we need to teach and, and that there's definitely savagery. So let me define the word subjugate. It means bring under uh -huh. domination or control, especially by conquest. So we talked about hip hop and we talked about it being ruled by other people and being used to control or, or, or influence people in certain ways. So the, the question that went with that was, have black men created a trend out of subjugation, out of being yeah. subjugated? Um, yes. So when it comes to music, um, we already know the music is, it's not that it's terrible, because you know I listen to it, but it is terrible. It, it's it, <laughs> what the message is terrible. Um, the, it's the message. And I think a lot of people, they, they rock with the message because they feel their pain, their hurt, and everything in it, and, and because of that, they they end up that image that the artist is putting out there. They become that image, and so you have a bunch of people who are walking around with crazy hair and just doing all this crazy stuff, treating women bad because in the songs it says to treat the women bad. It doesn't matter. Um, having guns because in the songs it was talking about this gun. Uh, smoking, whether they wanted to or not, just becoming drug dealers because this person came up on drug dealers, become wanting to, wanted to become a rapper because hey, I can do the same thing. So it really, it really doesn't teach us anything. I don't think music teaches us too much good. The music that we listen to, especially in the black community and black men, and because at a young age, black men aren't taught to deal with their emotions and they listen to this music it just becomes a whole big old thing so so now they're a more aggressive man than they would have been if which which relates to savagery mm. wow what do you think beth um i mean i i agree with kayla i mean i do agree that you know Again, I think just culturally, we've had to be strong. I mean, I, mm -hmm. we might have had that conversation before in terms of we've had to be strong for, re for, for certain reasons. And um, that has been to our detriment, you know, that we've not been able to just be normal or be raised, um, you know, 
to be free spirited to some extent. We've always had to do certain things a certain way in order to make sure that we were safe, to make sure that we weren't, you know, looked at or viewed in a certain way. Um, I just, and I know this is, again, I, I know I take things to a tangent, but it relates to the topic. I just think about how sometimes I see um, how black women treat their children. You know, kids are little, one and two, and they're yelling, get over here, sit down, be quiet, don't do that. Like, why are you, why are you yelling at a baby? You know what I'm saying? And I always wondered that because other cultures don't, don't do that. If their kid is one or two and they're acting like a one or two year old, then they're okay with that. We're the ones who are upset and yanking and cursing. And I'm saying some of us, not everybody, but you know, I know we've all seen that. Sit your A down if you don't be quiet, blah, blah, blah. But I started thinking about historically why that might be. And it might be because there was a time when children needed to be quiet or they could be taken from us, they could be sold, they could be uh, killed, anything could have happened. So out of all of that trauma of teaching our kids, you better be quiet. You, you do not speak. You can listen, but you better not open your mouth. And we have passed those traditions down throughout history and they're no longer needed. We are suffering from like post-traumatic stress disorder for hundreds of years of, because we've had to be in that situation. And then, you know, so we're gonna we bring it up to the 50s and the 60s, the 60s when welfare came in and then your man couldn't be in your home. So you take your man out of your home, then that be you, you create single women in the homes who are fending for themselves. So again, you have to be a mom and a dad. I mean, so there's just so many reasons why we have taught our men to be strong because we've raised little boys to be the head of the household. You know what I'm saying? He gotta be the daddy if daddy's not here. He gotta be the man of the house. And that's what women tell their sons. You got to be the man of the house. No, he's a baby. He's a little boy. He's got to be a boy. He can't be the man because he's not your man. So there's, a, I understand the reasons why we got to that place, but we've got to start to reverse it. We've got to start recognizing that we're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and that we no longer need to live the way that we used to live when our children could be stripped from us in slavery or something. You know what I'm saying? or if walking into a store and our children touch something that we would be possibly something could happen to us. Right. So these are the, these are the things that we have to reckon with. And I understand like traditions just get passed on and nobody addresses why are we still, why are we still doing this? Why are we still conducting business in this way? So we've got to look at that. And so I think that there is a lot to the savagery. And then it goes into the narrative of, who created the narrative of a savage black man? Black men have fed into the narrative that has been created for them mm -hmm. of a savage. I mean, what is it? Birth of a nation? Mm. It showed the black man, no, not the black man, the white man in black face running around after the white lady. She falls off a cliff and they, they run and kill him. And that was the birth. That was the very first movie, right? Mm -hmm. That they played in the cinema. Mm -hmm. Wow! Birth of a Nation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Again, a tactic to make people fearful of a black man. And so, if you keep creating a narrative about somebody, it's like a self fulfilling prophecy. Sometimes you just you ended up, you end up feeding into it. Kayla. Um, I, I remember I was getting a conversation, I think, with my student about that. And I, I was like, I'll be right back, y'all. So, okay. <laughs> I was like, basically everything that, say if you're a white person and you went to a white school and you didn't, it's not that you're racist, it's just that you really don't know many Black people and you don't have much to go based on. And um, I was like, just imagine if they saw everything, just the music videos, 
listened to all the songs that we put out and not, didn't really have research, didn't really know anybody who could project a good light on black people. I said, there's, there's so many things that are negative and that we put out there that are negative for ourselves. I was like, I don't know, I, I don't know. I don't think we should be, we should be understanding when, when somebody is looking at it. They might look at us weird and it's not because they're racist, it's because the news just had us on, t on, on, the, on the news. We just did something stupid. They don't really project the white person bad on the news. They definitely project the black person bad on the news. Then social media projects black people bad. There, it's just so many things that project us in a negative light that we just need to be more understanding and just like say, hey, listen, you know, and we shouldn't fit, go into that role like, okay, well, they're looking at me a little weird. So I'm about to be like, mm, mm, mm. And I had teammates who used to do that. I had a teammate who we would go somewhere pregame meal and she would just feed into it. Uh-uh, no, you're looking at me, cracker. Like, just go in on this individual. And I'm like, now do you think that they're going to give you any type of respect? Do you think that, what what does this do? Like, how does this change any anything? Is this going to change the narrative? No, you're just feeding into what you think they are thinking of you. And, and I don't know. Wow. I don't know. It's, it's a real thing. We feed into it oftentimes. Sadly, I've, I had teammates, I had one teammate, she was from Serbia. They treated her foul they, because they felt like she thought she was better than us when she really was genuine. She was nice. She, I still talk to her to this day. She was a genuine person, but because of their own insecurities and our insecurities, we feed into what people project, well, what we believe people think of us. Mel, you wanted to add on to that? Um, no, not really. Um, I, I'm still with my original uh, mindset, man. You know, it's just a supremacist mindset that's been, you know, overly agendized. Is that a word? Agend agendized? It is, it is tonight. You know, listen, I, <laughs> exactly. I, I make up words sometimes. Agenda. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to get us a sub language. <laughs> but, um, it's just been it's been overly played, you know. It's funny that you mentioned the birth of a nation because I was just about ten minutes ago. That's why I was at and thought, you know, um, the necessity to do that again is just to uphold their position that they have right now in society. No more, no less. So, I, you know, and I, I was reading a book. I didn't get through it, but I was reading a book, and it was it mentioned that. Um, it really, a lot of stuff comes from fear, mm -hmm. fear and ignorance. Like when you just don't know something about, don't, aren't aware or don't understand something, you sometimes become fearful. And then you project that, fe that fear is projected um, as, you know, in a negative way. And I mean, I, I think that that's the basis of everything that goes on is when people don't understand one another, they project a, whatever, it makes them uncomfortable and they become fearful. And that's how that image of a, of a black man became a savage, you know? And they just ran with it because they understood because people didn't recognize it, that they could run with that image. And we just fell into the trap. And it's funny because they've set many traps. It's not even just, fell into the trap, but they've set traps that we've fallen into. Right. So, yeah. so you know, leaving draw what the what was it back in the 60s they left in LA um trainfuls of of guns. Yeah, they were doing that in Chicago more recently. This train full of guns. They would leave them in Watts and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then knowing people were gonna go see what those were about. You know, it was just, it's just interesting. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I really do believe that we're at a point where the masses are recognizing the setup that has happened to so many people, that how we've been set up. And it's just so that because this pandemic is not, quote, racial, it's impacting 
people across the board, people are now recognizing like, dang, we've been taking a lot. Like we've been, it's a lot of lies that have been going on about stuff. And we're, we're seeing how things have been manipulated. And um, so it's just opening people's eyes up, I think a lot more to what has happened. And maybe that will make them understand what the plight of a lot of people who have been um, races that have been um, subjugated. Yeah, so I want to say something about what uh, Kayla said earlier about um, how some of the uh, white people aren't racist. And I would say systemically they are. It's not their fault. You know, they don't even know that they're racist, but they're going to gravitate towards what, whatever is going to, you know, elevate their position. You know what I mean? And they're going to use it. You know, they could love to mess out of Black people, but if they got to step on some Black people to get to where they got to get to, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that they would probably do it, you know, and that's like the scary part about racism, that you have so many people, you know, uh, ignorantly participating because it just works out for them, you know, and it just goes to the narrative, which your mom was saying, that um, these things that you mentioned were definitely uh, historical facts, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's definitely a plan to uh, keep a certain people down or a certain person, group of people down, you know? Um, and it's becoming obscene at this point what the plan is. You know, they're even willing to sacrifice their own. And, you know, I have to tell you, I always say that um, the, the ones who are gonna take down the people in the high tower will be their children, you know, because they're the only ones that can get to them. You know, and they know that if they do it the way their parents want it done, even their existence is not necessary. So they have to kill them in order to progress. You know, um, the ugly part about that is this, it's just really a perpetual cycle. Because once they become the elders, they act the same way their parents did. You know, because they got to keep the resources where they are so they can so they can always sustain. Everywhere they've ever went and tried to settle, they've been overrun. By the indigenous people of that land, you know, what I mean? because it's we gonna take over. That's what we do, you know. That's really all I wanted to say on that. Though, great, great, great topic. Word. So, in closing, on that note, on that particular question, I just want to point out in the question, the first question I said, have black men created a trend out of being out of being subjugated? And the key, the key to that question is. Have, have black men created a trend? Have, have, we, have we turned it into a trend? Um, the next question was, have black men taught, have been taught to normalize savagery? The key in that term, that question is normalized. So you, you take those keys out, uh, uh, creating a trend and normalizing it. I think it's one thing to be subjugated. Um, it's, it's one thing to be violated. It's, it's something different when we start becoming the, the, the perpetuators, the, when we start to normalize and create a trend out of our own victimization, at that point, you can no longer be perceived as a victim. Now you start being looked at as the problem. And right. I, that's, what's, that's what I see happening. And that's what prompted me to, um, to make a note of those particular yeah. questions.